In the listening, they hear. And then they can listen to what they're hearing. So there are three stages to listening. First, you hear words. Then you hear the meaning inside the words. Then you listen to the meanings. And in that third stage of listening, something about you, about you begins to change, to begin to transform. You feel, you're inspired, you're moved. Okay? I know you're listening to me. And I appreciate that. But you may also be fantasizing, daydreaming about other things. You may also be contaminated with your own assumptions that you actually understand. Rumi is a Persian. He is 50. He has loved. He has lost. He has grieved. He sought seclusion. So when he says, listen, can you hear all of that? To have a father who has written this beautiful book where you have read that book every single day for 20 years, and all of a sudden a stranger comes to you and says, trash it. Do you know what it means to sacrifice? Your father and your, what your father has written. Do you know how it feels to sacrifice being called a teacher, having lost 500 students, being abandoned by the world, entering confusion and chaos and loneliness and seclusion? Then there is nay. Nay is the reed. And you can go on YouTube and uh, in the search engine just type reed flute. Indians, Persians, Arabs, when they played the reed flute, Turks, it's really, 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 really sad. It's not sad, I'm sorry. It's sorrowful. Sadness belongs to the events that take place in the world. Sorrow belongs to your soul. See? There are reed beds. It's like when you go to the redwood forest, all you see is redwoods. When you go to red, uh, reed beds, all you see are reeds. Now, when reeds are growing, initially, they are full on the inside. It's not hollow. But as they mature, they become empty from within. They are hard on the outside and soft from the inside. Every one of us in this class, and I include myself in that, we have a lot of stuff on the inside. We are not empty. We have moments where everything inside gets deleted and we find ourselves in this empty spot and we have no idea what to do with it. It calms you, it frustrates you. It brings about peace. It also angers you. It makes you feel empty. It also makes you feel full. It brings about discontent. You also realize you're profoundly content. The reed bed is about belonging to a community. It's like being in the Garden of Eden. All you worship is God. All you see are the angels. There is no pain. There is satisfaction. You know how to suffer well, even in the Garden of Eden. You know how to be disappointed maturely, even in the Garden of Eden, you see. But this particular reed okay, gets cut from the bottom and is taken to someone's shop. 
The reed is cut into a few pieces, some holes are drilled, you know, some oil is rubbed on the wood to make the sound or the tone somewhat more mature. And then someone breathes air, you know, into this reed. And the sound that comes out, it just puts you in a trance. Again, should you find yourself uh, near your laptop or desktop, go to YouTube and write Duduk. It's an Armenian reed flute. It is profoundly rich. And if you happen to be the right place, it'll really force you to break down and you feel awful in a good way, you see. And so someone asks this reed, why is it that when someone breathes through you, into you, you have such a sorrowful tone to you? And the reed says, listen to me because I have a story to tell you. Ask yourself why it is that when you talk to Confucius, he just tells you stories. Why is it that the Buddha tells us stories? Why Jesus tells us stories? Quran is nothing but stories. The Old Testament is nothing but stories. What is it about stories that contain so much wisdom, but the wisdom needs to be decoded? No. That should someone ask you, oh, professor, what is wisdom? You need to tell a story. What is a relationship? You need to tell a story. Why am I a loser? You tell them a story. Indirect communication, as Kierkegaard would say, that is the way of wisdom. It's nonlinear. Right? Now you have six books of stories, six volumes, story after story after story. And you have to sit back after having read a single story that sometimes is 30 pages and say, okay, what the hell does the story mean? So here, Listen to this reed flute as it's telling you a story. Jodai means separation. It means to be cut off. The best way perhaps I can describe what it feels like and what it means to be cut off from your community, from the things that give meaning and purpose. Go back in time if you can stretch your memories far back to those moments where you were actually in love with someone. I don't care if you fell in love with, for the right reasons, the wrong reasons. Love is love, okay? But go back to those times. When you were in the presence of the person you loved, it was your reed bed. You were amongst company, good company, someone who could look at you and you felt comfortable. It gave you meaning and purpose. It made you feel rich and whole. And then they left as if they took 95% of your soul with them. And you have no idea what to do with yourself. You're lost, you're confused, you're angry. Okay? Human existence cannot but be a sorrowful manifestation 
Rumi is Muslim. Jews and Christians, Hindus and Buddhists, what they all have in common is the following. All these traditions believe that we have a pure mind. We have the light of the Buddha within. We have the kingdom of God within. We have the light of Muhammad. We are made in the image of God. Why is it that we are human all too human? Why do we have the human emotions that belong to the physical world and all of its frustrations? Why do we feel so strange that this is not our home? Why do we long for beauty, for contentment, for justice? Something about us feels as if we know what justice is. We may not speak of it or be able to. We may not speak of beauty. We may not be able to speak of justice, beauty, truth, wisdom, fullness. But there is something about us, like the reed flute, that sorrowfully yearns, talks about the things that can't be expressed well. Do not be deceived when someone says, I am happy. They can't be. Do not be deceived when someone says, I am full, I am rich, I am content. They cannot be. It's impossible. Human life is about incompleteness, injustice. Even if you're the Buddha, you fight to bring about enlightenment. Why? You want to take people back home to the purity of mind. It is good that you're in school, but you're struggling to secure an unknown future. And you assume that future will be a cradle of happiness. There's a good amount of longing in that. And what Rumi is saying is read becomes symbolic of every man and every woman, every human being, because they long to go back home. Some people find home in drugs. Some people find home in alcohol. Some people find home in sex. Some people find home in getting a PhD. But eventually they'll come to realize the home that they have been creating will eventually evict them. That's not the true home. We are creatures that used to live in the Garden of Eden, Rumi says. You don't rebel against the wishes of your parents because you're a jerk or an idiot. Their ideas are not your home. Every human being is a single reed bed. They have been cut. There is longing and yearning inside every human being. Marriage will distract you for only some time. Having children will distract you for only some time. You will eventually long to go back home. I think it was Seneca, the Stoic philosopher, who once said, or maybe it was Epictetus, I'm not sure. These days, all the names seem to be the same. You get married, you won't be happy. You don't get married, you won't be happy. Have children, you'll be disappointed. Don't have children, you'll be disappointed. Go to school, you'll be disappointed. Don't go to school, you'll be disappointed. Live life, you'll be disappointed. Commit suicide, you'll be disappointed. Either way you go, disappointment awaits you. But Rumi recognizes that his laments, and that's shikayat. Shikayat means lament.
You know, you have to be very, very mature to stop complaining about your ridiculous, pathetic little lives. What does it mean to be a woman? What does it mean to be a man? Is it good to be gay? Is it, what does it mean to be straight? All the stuff that's been happening the past year or so. When you go to therapy, what do you talk about? Little things. I mean, they're big for you, but they're really little. And Rumi says, if you want to lament, if you want to be angry, don't be angry because your father wasn't there. Human beings are alone. They'll always be alone. Don't be angry because you got an F. Don't complain because you lost your job. There is a bigger issue at hand. You are fallen from grace. Complain about that. When you realize you used to have wings and fly in the Garden of Eden, and now you walk on filth, lament about that. Okay, so you come out. Everybody knows you're gay. Everybody knows you're straight. Everybody knows you're bi. Eventually, as a human being, you need to be in a relationship. Are you competent enough? Mature enough, reflective enough to have a healthy relationship. Coming out is not difficult. Maintaining a healthy relationship is. Being able to compromise without being angry and resentful is. In understanding that you are a reed, Small questions disappear. Small complaints disappear. And big questions and big complaints come about. Socrates goes to someone and says, who are you? And an idiot like me says, my name is Amir. Socrates says, I'm not interested in your name, man. When I ask you who you are, you need to tell me what your purpose is. What is the meaning to your life? Do you have any usefulness about you? Small questions belong to people who have garbage on the inside. Big questions are about people who are hollowed emptied from within because they understand the four noble truths. There is no self. There is no permanence to anything. Life will disappoint you. Stop talking about your pathetic self. It means nothing. Sine khaham sharh sharh as faraq. Sine means heart. It means soul. It means a mind that understands, truly understands. Some of you in this class, uh, if you find these ideas interesting, you may be interested in reading a book called Something, I forget the title. Hermit. Is it Hermit? Hermit? There's a story about these Christian monks who live somewhere in Greece in seclusion in the caves. Let's say the guy's name is Father Bob or something. Eventually, people find them out. They go to him and they say, oh, Bob, you look so serene. Bob says, well, thank you. What do you want? Don't waste my time. I just had a fight with my husband. How do I fix it? Bob says, 
I lived inside this cave for 30 years so that God could find me worthy enough to shower me with wisdom. Wisdom. And you want to know how to get along with your husband? What is wrong with you? If you're here for wisdom, I will tell you relationships are not your answer to life. Remember the saying, first seek the kingdom of God and everything else shall be given to you. Seek wisdom first. Then get married. And should your companion be an awful human being, you will know how to deal with it. But if you have no wisdom and you have an awful companion, you'll go to therapy for 20 years. And what Father Bob is telling this woman, let me give you wisdom. And then you will know how to fix your issues with your husband, with your kids, with your neighbor, with your dad, with your mom, and with yourself. But you're here with a pathetic problem. And you want a pathetic solution. And eventually, Father Bob just leaves like Lao Tzu. I'm tired of people's pathetic little questions. means go home, grab a plate, ceramic, the most expensive plate you have, hold it up and slam it on the ground and just watch what happens. It shatters into a thousand and one pieces. Who can understand the sorrows of the reed flute? Because the reed flute has a heart. It is sorrowful because it's been shattered. It's been broken by being cut off. By praying, longing, yearning to go back, but can't. So lives in exile. And never forgets the exile. And lives with it 24-7. Do you love me? How can I love you? I'm in exile. Be my companion. I'm in exile. How can I make a home down here? I'll make you happy. I can't be happy in exile. I want to go back home. You're talking about being shattered. And being lonely in your brokenness and living in despair in a healthy way. Remember, Lou Rumi is, is, is not a happy man. He lives in despair. He suffers. He understands because he has wisdom. And wisdom is a burden you carry. And yet he suffers well. How? He writes poetry. So who can understand the laments of the reed? A heart that has been shattered, very much like the reed. If there is anything about you that's broken, respect the broken part of you. If your marriage has gone bad, okay? If you're African-American in this culture and no one receives you well, If you're sick, if you're old, if you're dying, if something about you is broken, have enough respect for your brokenness to find the right ears. Speak to those ears about your brokenness. If your boyfriend just left you, find someone who had a boyfriend who left them. Don't talk to anyone who is in a healthy relationship, they will not understand. They will give you advice and that will bother the hell out of you. <clears throat> you know when you're in your room and you lock the door and you turn off the lights and you're crying 
and you're alone and you're in despair and your mom knocks on the door and out of respect for your mom, you open the door and your mom says, honey, it's dark. Turn on the light. Honey, why are you crying? Listen, this too shall pass. It is true what your mom is saying. But you and your mom are occupying two completely different places. Your heart is broken. Her heart is intact. But all of a sudden gets broken because she has all of a sudden seen you. And she wants you to put you back together. But you see, a broken heart takes a long, long time to be put back together. Especially a heart that's been broken because they have realized they have fallen from grace. You see Chris over there? Forgive me, Chris. He lived in a monastery from the age 14. Why the hell a young kid who can have fun with life lock himself up in a monastery? Why sit cross-legged for hours? Why read these stupid, ridiculous books? What is he looking for? What has he lost? How could this man be a good companion to anyone? He has always lived alone. And that is the function of the reed. Lives alone, laments alone, and is heartbroken alone. Sine chaham sharh sharh as faraq. Faraq means separation. Not just an existential separation, where you just feel as if you've been abandoned. Something about you yearns to go home, and yet you don't know how. It's not that you've been separate from your dog or your cat, your ambitiousness about getting an A or a B in a class, getting married. No. A heart that's really, honestly, sincerely been broken can only be broken through this love for going back home. That's the only brokenness that has value for Rumi. Don't let your heart be broken by the events of the world. The world means nothing. Zaman bishnu'e pir amuzagar. مکن تکیه بر گردش روزگار که این منزل درد و جای غم است در این دامگه شادمانی کم است You who are looking for wisdom or you who have wisdom زه من بشنوی پیر آموزگار listen to me مکن تکیه بر گردش روزگار Do not be so dependent on the physical world and physical life. This is a home that brings sorrow, that creates pain. In this home, you will not find much joy. Rumi is saying, if you're a human being, have enough respect for yourself. Be broken only in one way. That long time ago, Adam and Eve did something and they fell. You are the product of fallenness. And the Islamic tradition, Adam cried and cried and cried and cried, prayed and prayed to God. I want to go back home. I made a mistake and eventually God said, fine, I will bring you back. 
Sorrow, lamenting, praying, and weeping are the only tools we have to find ourselves back home. سینه خواهم شرح شرح از فراخت تا بگویم شرح درد اشتیاق If I can find a heart that looks like mine feels like mine tastes like mine broken into a thousand pieces to that heart I can speak I will speak of my sorrow that down here I have tried to be happy but happiness is not to be found I've tried for contentment not to be found. I've tried every which way to be happy. It's not a place for happiness. Only that heart knows. If you know that you are fallen, that's the only thing you think about. The only literature you will ever read in your life is about fallenness. Your friends will always be in the category of fallenness. Your speech will always have the seasoning of being fallen. You embody fallenness. People will look at you and they will feel something. You will remind them of what they will not know. but they will have a sensation of sorts. You will be able to occupy a good part of them. And that's the reed flute. Karen? Yeah. Um, I was just wondering, you know, you were, you were, you were going to release all trees that Persian Korea. Mm-hmm. Uh, would the imam in the mosque no. read? No. no. They do recite poetry, poems of Hafiz and Rumi and Saadi and Baba Tahir. But it's all within the context of Islamic theology. Uh, Rumi, Saadi, Hafiz, they were... Teachers of Sufi thought, okay, Islamic theology and Sufism are very, very, very different. It got to a point in Turkey, for example, that they closed down all Sufi schools, kind of like what Christians did to uh, philosophy schools, okay, as the Christians destroyed all Uh, schools that inspired people to qu- ask questions and examine and be honest reflectors. Uh, Islamic autocrats did the same thing. They shut down all Sufi schools. Uh, because Sufis, I don't want to read the Quran as John says to Jesus. I want the Qur'an to live inside my heart, but how can that be possible? I want to be moved when I read the Gospels. I want this, this thing to live inside me. And Jesus becomes the embodiment of that. That you don't need to read the Bible. Just look at me. I'll bring that stuff to life for you. And that's what Sufism is about. But they do say those things in the pulpit. You know, um, Yeah. So maybe a, a more, I don't know how to say a more hippie mom, like a more countercultural <laughs> Counterculture hippie imams exist, can, can uh, preach for maybe two, three weeks before they get executed, yes. بشنو از نی چون حکایت می کند و از جدایی ها شکایت می کند از نیستان تا مرا بگیدن در نفیرم مرگزن مرد سینه خواهم شرح شرح از فراغ تا بگویم شرح دردشتی ها اوکی یس نیکس لائن هر کسی از زن خود شد یار من ام ساری من به هر جمعیتی نالان شدم 